We are 18 days into 2024. 18 days and the guitar market has been so weird that at least one YouTuber has claimed that we may be living in a Chibson universe. That somehow the world of 2023 has folded over and been taken over basically by the Instagram account Chibson USA. We used to think it was a parody site, but maybe now it's reality. We've got this Schecter razor blade guitar that just looks like it's I mean, it looks like a Gibson ad. And now we've got Gibson humbuckers that are $1,000 and come in their tiny own little Les Paul case, basically. It's it's a Les Paul case. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Of course, when Schecter does the MGK thing, we kind of think, well, I mean, it's Schecter. They work with these artists and sometimes they, you're just going to get what you get with those guys. But when Gibson does it, there's a part of me, at least, that just thinks, is Gibson dumb? Of course, what I'm talking about is the 1959 Humbucker Collectors Edition Series 1. It's $999, and whether or not you think this product is just another sign of the folks at Gibson running the place into the ground, what I'd like to argue is that $999 isn't a bad price. They claim it's the most accurate recreation of the PAF. Of course, Gibson invented the PAF in the 1950s as their version of the humbucking pickup. Uh, it's a pickup that so many other pickups are based on. Gibson says that they used a combination of 3D scanning, scientific analysis, and reverse engineering of original examples from the late 1950s, coupled with specs from the Gibson archives. All of those other things people from other companies could do, I guess, but pulling specifications from the Gibson archives is something exclusive to Gibson. They've also put it in this kind of ridiculous case and this is the case that makes it feel most like a chips in product uh this is a case made by or is it lifton and lifton is the company that makes like the really nice les paul and es335 cases for gibson it's definitely a premium case it's got this velvet design here the velvet inlay and a, the pickups just sit there it it's beautiful I'll admit this part's kind of dumb, but the rest of it, maybe it's a little bit snake oil. Maybe it's super legit. I don't know. I can't hear them. If I heard them, honestly, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between it and another PAF. I might not even think they sound good. This product's not for me, but again, I don't think it's necessarily a dumb price at $1,000. And I don't think it's even really a ridiculous price. Of course, this is limited to a thousand sets. That also makes it valuable. And if these were priced at probably $2,000, they would have sold out in one day, just like these sold out in one day. They're pretty basic pickups, two conductor wiring on an Al Nico 4 magnet, uh, nickel covers. I mean, you can see all this stuff here. They're a medium wind at 8.6 and 7.7K uh, for the treble and rhythm pickup. They're using 42 gauge enamel wire, so on and so forth. They've got a lot of features. Again, they look really nice, uh, but they also kind of just look like pickups. I can't get past this case. The case is kind of ridiculous. One of the things that's funny to me is in the pickup shop with this whole authenticity thing, they actually give you the wiring diagrams and how to set it. Uh, I assume this comes with like all Gibson pickups. And of course, like I said, these are vintage pickups. They only have the two conductor wiring. Now, so I've been looking at pickups from other brands, brands that maybe would be competitors to this. I don't know. Brands like Throwback. I don't know a lot about Throwback. I actually kind of found out about them today, but they make a PAF style humbucker that starts at $740 per pair. And they go up as high as $787 if you want aged gold covers. Now you can pick your own magnet type. They did it on a vintage winding machine. They claim that, uh, you know, it's uh, this super good, accurate, they, they say it's an accuracy that can only be matched by going back to Gibson Kalamazoo in 1957. You know, they got the machines, I guess, like that got, that's got to give them some credibility in that department, but still 
This is a $740 to $790 pickup. I looked around for some other brands and I found a brand called Rewind. They don't say a lot in here except there's a 1950s to 1970s replica models starting at $750. I think they're all pretty much $750 for the various years. I don't know how much information there there is here. They're uh, machine wound, unpotted, rough cast, Alnico, 42 gauge, plain enamel wire, vintage correct braided shield. So they're made with a lot of the same specifications as the Gibson ones and they're $750. A brand I've been hearing a lot about, or I, I guess a guy I've been hearing a lot about over and over over the last year is Ron Ellis. He makes the pickups for Bill Frizzell. He makes some other models and they start at $425 for one pickup. So if you want a pair, that's $850. We're in the ballpark here. It's not a thousand. Gibson is beating everybody else's price. But in this case, with any of these humbuckers, you could make the argument, and it's probably a little bit of a stretch, that the fancy box that the Gibson pickups come in make it worth that extra 150 bucks. Now, the most ridiculous pickup I found, if you thought the Gibson pickup was dumb, where were you? 10 years ago when Seymour Duncan released the Zephyr Silver Humbucker. It is a humbucker using silver wire instead of the traditional copper. I found these on Sweetwater. Oh, and by the way, they come in a fancy case. You see that fancy case right there? Fancy case. Uh, like I said, it's a silver pickup. Uh, they're, of course, saying all of these things about innovation cryogenic treatment they take your pickup and they freeze it or something i didn't look a lot into it i just kind of got stuck on the whole pure silver magnet wire and premium components i think i ran right past the price up here 959 dollars 959 dollars only 40 dollars less than a gibson and these have been on the market for about a decade this gibson pickup came out today at $1,000, it sold out today. I don't love it, but somebody's gonna put these on reverb within the next week or two, and we'll see what kind of prices you see on that. Hopefully it's not insane, I wish it didn't happen, but I think it's gonna happen, right? But let's go back to this. The Seymour Duncans have been around a long time, and of course there is one other pickup that you kind of have to talk about. Uh, Ryan talked about these a long time ago, I don't remember if it was on YouTube or somewhere else, but it's the Rural Congus $2,000 active pickup powered by a vacuum tube. The thing with this is it's a $2,000 upcharge and you could only get them in the Rural Congus guitar when it came out. This is like a very special, unique situation. There's definitely a lot of technology here. And I'll admit the Seymour Duncan's got a lot of technology, like possibly in the pickup itself, silver wire, a lot of new things. But I don't know, again, when I look at all of these different brands, $740, $750, $850, $959, all of a sudden, this $1,000 price point on the Gibson does not really seem dumb. Or I should say this $1,000 does not seem out of place. Gibson is trying to sell a premium collectible product at a price that based on other products that are premium pickups, like ultra premium pickups, it might be justified. I don't want to admit that, but I don't think there's a way around it. Of course, I won't buy these pickups because I don't have a thousand dollars or whatever they end up going for in reverb. I probably will never never hear these pickups aside from in a YouTube video or something. But again, I just don't think this is dumb. It sold fast. Is it marketing? Sure. Is it smart marketing? I think it's smart marketing. Again, it sold fast. Everybody's been talking about them today. I did want to double back uh, on one thing before I end the video. I couldn't help but notice as I was reading the description of this new Gibson $1,000 pickup, 
a couple different things that jumped out that reminded me of a story from about five weeks ago of Gibson filing for a cancellation of DiMarzio's trademarks regarding their path and the double cream bobbin. Of course, this is a patent applied for. And in the case of broadly, we see these called PAFs or P period, A period, F period. And the DiMarzio pickup is just the PATH, which is capital P, capital A, capital F, no periods. But that's what Gibson was trying to get canceled. Additionally, these pickups do have the double vintage white butyrate bobbins. And whether or not that vintage double white breaks DiMarzio's trademark is kind of maybe a gray area that Gibson was trying to preemptively avoid. Or maybe they just went into that lawsuit because they knew it would build kind of some suspense of like, why is Gibson doing this? Maybe now we know. Now, of course, the Gibson pickup is in double vintage white uh, and the DiMarzio is for double cream. So whether or not those are the same colors is hard to say. And of course, uh, the argument that was made at the time is that even though Gibson was using this double vintage white or the double white or double cream bobbin or whatever, because it was under chrome pickups, it didn't really matter. So there's kind of a question of whether or not it matters here. Anyway, I kind of just thought that was an interesting aside. My bigger point with this video is there are pickups that are, are very expensive. Maybe the throwbacks and the rewinds and the Seymour Duncans and the... Uh, Ron Ellis's are all pickups that you think are overpriced too. You let me know. Um, for me, I don't know. I've got one of these, the Seymour Duncan JB. It's probably my favorite humbucker. It's a hundred bucks. So if you're looking for a humbucker that at least that I think sounds good, just go get a JB. It's a hundred bucks. Or if you're a DiMarzio and you want that double cream, uh, 90 bucks at Sweetwater. I don't know. You tell me what you think. Am I wrong? Am, am I way off the mark on this? Is is Gibson just nuts? Convince me I'm wrong, please. I, I, I want to hear your thoughts. Again, I just don't. It's not for me, but obviously it's for somebody because they sold a thousand units in one day. So somebody wants it. Uh, so just tell me what you think. Stay grounded.